extraordinary life. This is Salem, a people full of prayer, a people intimate with the Holy Spirit, a people too strong for the devil to defeat, a people full of power, the extraordinary life. Thanks for joining us once again. And stay blessed as you listen. Take it by force. Welcome to another edition of The Extraordinary Life. Not seen, yet real. Not seen, yet real. Please, lift your hand. Let's start with the demonstration. Uh, I, the year 1982, I did a little bit of children's ministry, so I know the power of... Uh, or visual aid. Now, lift your hand. Please catch some air for me. I want to see the one in your hand, whether it's blue, green, or, light, or yellow. What did you catch? Did you see it? Is, a, is, is wind real? So you are not seeing it, yet it is real. And Jesus said, you only see the effect of it. Your, your, the promises of God are speaking about the you in your future, the real you. The promises of God are speaking about the reality of God's mind in the spirit realm. So when he says by his stripes you were healed, he's speaking of a reality of what's already established in the spirit realm. He is not dismissing the fact that the enemy may want to come and attack your body. The enemy does. That's why he said you must wage a spiritual warfare because the enemy is at work. But greater than the enemy, you have something that the enemy cannot decode. And that's what he wants you to know. Become the example that he wants you to be on planet earth. Shout, I may not see it, but my miracles are real. I may not see it, but my blessings are real. I may not see it, my victories are real. Now, when you know they are real in the spirit realm, you now got to ask yourself, what do I do to pull them down to the natural realm? For every man, every man who has done something significant and impactful and did it genuinely, went through certain principles. I said yesterday, there are prayers, there are principles. Prayer never substitutes the principles of the word of God. And principles never substitute prayers. So you must carry all of them. Amen? Now, so if I come to church and I want to stay here and fast for 50, 50 days and 100 days, that's prayers. Now what prayer does is to accelerate the power of God to deliver. But God will ask you to do something. Now Mary said to them, whatever he said to you, do it. Say to somebody, do something. do something. Many believers fail because they are not taking responsibility. They are expecting God to do what they should do. Shout, do something. do something. You tell me I don't have a job. You can create a job. You are too smarter than that. Than going around the marketplace complaining. Hmm. Here are creators of jobs. Many years ago, I was preaching a message in Port Harcourt. And I was shouting that night, Tuesday night. Generator, what are you doing in darkness? He says, ye are the light of the world. So you are the generator. And you are joining them to complain about darkness. We can't understand what is happening. Shine out what is happening. That's why you are generator. Provide light. Come on, somebody shout, I may not see it yet, but it is so real. I may not have touched it yet, but it is so real. That's what he was talking about. Eyes have not seen. Ears haven't heard. The man of man can't fathom what God has already laid up. 
Your miracles are laid up. Your healings are laid up. Your breakthrough is already, somebody shout, already laid up. The next level we're talking about is already done. The word of God only speaks of the reality in the spirit realm. God speaks because it is created. Each time the word of God speaks, a miracle is commanded. So in Genesis chapter 1, it says, let there be light. Darkness could not resist that. No matter how thick. And today, your miracles are commanded. Your victories are commanded. Say to somebody, I may not have seen it yet. But it is real. <laughs> a young man who was supposed to be here to, I mean, with me on this trip, he was with me in Port Harcourt about a week or so ago. And he said, he's a, a powerful worship leader. Very powerful worship leader. Now, anyway, what I'm just trying to say is, he's been looking for admission for five years. Six years. Five, six years. I'm wasting our youth. But I just made him know this admission is already there, commanded in the spirit. You have followed all the others uh, to complain about jam and complain about the investing system, complain about because you'll be shocked. That in some investors now, candidates pay as much as 250000 to secure admission. Oh yeah. When about 1.5 million people sit for jump, and the entire investing system nationwide, public, private, can only admit 500000 What happened to the 1 million? Public, private, capacity available to admit students, 500000 Last year, you had 1.4 million candidates who secured their, 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 their jam. So every year, we're turning millions back to the street. So people are getting so desperate, they want to do everything to get in there. And here's this boy, powerfully talented, and graced by God, living right. And six years, he hasn't got one. Somebody shout, it is not right. There's something that is not right that will be put right today in your life. Yeah. Everything that does not line up with the word of God is not right. And today, listen to me, God will turn something around here. Yeah. All stories said and done, in less than five minutes, he was still standing in my office when a phone rang. He's in the university right now. Less than five minutes. He says, I am the Lord. And I change not. Therefore, ye sons of Jacob, covenant people, you cannot be consumed. Now, God was not speaking a presupposition. God was speaking a spiritual reality that you cannot be consumed. The enemy may come so fierce. The battles of life may come so tough. The storms may rage so high. But it is settled. He said you cannot be consumed. I mean that is it's a spiritual reality. And all you need to do is anchor your faith. And begin to do the principles of the word of God. And sure you will come out with a testimony. Somebody shout I am God's champion. Amen? Amen. I've come to understand the longer your spiritual warfare, the sweeter your testimony. Amen. When you come out of that. You know, there's nothing you tell that woman who had 12 years of flow of blood. There's nothing you tell her. Keep quiet. Don't talk again. What? Say, so these 12 years, were you suffering with me? I must talk. Yes. Amen? Yes. Now, you can imagine Peter, that, that PA of Jesus. And... and being the, all those fish eaters, they are huge. So I can imagine Peter was a huge person. Maybe huger than my pastor. Amen? Taller than my pastor. And, and you can imagine that Peter is standing there. And 
Peter, if you mess up, you pull out a sword. That guy doesn't joke around his master. He will, yeah, what do you want? And, and this woman said, do what you want, but you can't stop me. I, I am tired of being sick. My reality must manifest. The fake me must give way. Something new must happen. And, and you see, you come to that point when Jesus said, he said that, that the, from the time of John the Baptist up until now, he was giving us a principle there. He said, he said the kingdom of, of heaven, is, it was the kingdom of heaven, he said. Kingdom of heaven. Because kingdom of God cannot suffer violence. Kingdom of God is the place where God himself is seated. Kingdom of heaven is the influence of heaven's kingdom on earth. So when he's talking about kingdom of heaven, he's talking about you, children of God on earth. He said the kingdom of heaven suffereth violence. But he said there's a principle. There are those who are going to take it back. They are going to say no more. They are going to say enough, Satan. They, he said the violent are going to take it by a force. He wasn't teaching you to become a Taliban. Hello? But he was teaching you to, to, to be armed in the spirit. And dismiss any fake you the enemy wants to impose on you. Any wrong identity the enemy wants to impose on you. He wants, he wants, he wants those, those impostures in the spirit to be dismissed so that we can see the real you. Some of the shout, the real me will manifest now. Amen. Amen. So most time we are focused on what we see. And God said that is fake. Second Corinthians, Corinthians chapter 4. We are focused so much on what we see. And God says that is fake. That's not the reality. He wants us to start focusing on the reality now. The real you is not the poor you. The real you is not the sick and downcasted you. The real you is not the depressed you. The real you is not the deprived you. The real you is not the barren you. The real you is not the single you. The real you is the champion you. Now, and he said, Second Corinthians chapter 4, verse number 18. Can we read it together? He said, Why we look not? Are the things which are seen. Hello, stop there. The, leper, the lepers came to Jesus. And all they were seeing was what were they seeing? What were the lepers seeing? Excuse me? All they were seeing was leprosy. That was all they were seeing. They have been a castaway. By the law, lepers are not supposed to mix up with people. They are to be 